apostles who were in their room out of fear and the Holy Spirit called us out today for Pentecost. Welcome back. Uh, I just wanted to go through a couple of our changes um, and routine things just as far as health and safety goes. Um, obviously, number one, you're seeing as you sat down in your pews, there are certain sections which are marked off and um, you know, if you kind of avoid sitting on the blue tape or the pews that are taped off. So we do appreciate everybody respecting that and, and sitting where you're at. A couple other things as we kind of go through the Mass that you will notice are a little different. At the Our Father, we are asking that you not hold hands uh, so we don't spread any germs that might be around. Um, at the sign of peace, we're also asking that you not shake people's hands or hug or things like that. But a simple bow and a simple uh, using the words peace. Uh, if you want to wave, that's fine. Come up with your own way, but um, in your own contactless way of giving the sign of peace. Uh, at the offertory, we will not have an offertory procession. That way the, the hosts and stuff aren't sitting out um, in the back of church. So we will just kind of, we'll, we'll bring those out from, from the back. You will have noticed uh, we're also not passing a basket uh, for offertory, so there is a big basket at the entrance of the church where you can leave envelopes or donations. And also at the end of Mass, uh, there'll be ushers at each of the doors with a basket that you can just drop it in the basket. Uh, when you do leave the church, uh, you, we do, you are allowed to use any of the exit doors at the end of Mass to exit uh, so we don't have everybody funneling out of the same door. Uh, so all the doors are open at the end of Mass. Uh, and we will open those all up so you don't have to touch the doors and doorknobs and things like that as well. Um, the, only, uh, the other major change that we're going to do is with communion. So with communion, instead of having people line up in the aisles where you kind of will be right next to each other, we will bring communion to you. So for communion, what we're going to ask that you do, if you want to receive communion, is that you stand and move to the end of the pew that is closest to you. So if you're sitting here in the center aisle, there'll be some standing on this side of the pew, there'll be some standing on that side of the pew. Okay? And, and, and the same with every section. Just move to the end of the pew that is closest to you and stand at the end of the pew. That'll be your signal to us that you want to receive. If you do not want to receive communion, just stay seated or kneel down, and then that way we know that you don't want to receive communion. Okay? And once you have received, if you would kneel, um, that would be the most appropriate thing. Either kneel, or if you can't kneel, go ahead and sit down. That way you know, we know you have received, and that way we will make sure. There will be ministers coming down each aisle. We'll go down one aisle and come back the, the, the other side. So we'll go down this aisle, come down the center. There'll be one going down that aisle, coming back down over here. And people going down the outside walls. Um, so there will be ministers kind of spread out throughout the church to make sure that we do get every person that way. All right. So I think that was all that I had to cover before Mass today. Oh, for communion. Uh, we do ask for communion that everybody receive on your hands. So if you will make a throne for Christ, put your right hand out, put your left hand flat on top of it. The flatter you put your hands, the easier it is for us to put the host in your hand. Um, so if you will do that, if you really don't want to receive on your hand and you want to receive on the tongue, then you need to talk to Father Chris or Father Bernard after Mass and you'll give a communion after Mass. We will not give out communion on the tongue during Mass. Um, and that's for the protection of you, for the protection of other um, fellow parishioners, and also for the protection of our ministers. Um, but if you do need to receive on the tongue, you can see the priest after Mass, and they will take care of that for you. Thank you for the reminder. All right. Other than that, thank you, and welcome to Mass. Mm -hmm.
instill in us and in all people a sense of the sacredness of every human life. Inspire our efforts to protect and care for the most vulnerable, especially women who are pregnant, their unborn children, and the sick and elderly. Strengthen us in the hope that with you nothing is impossible. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who by his cross makes all things new. Amen. Thank you.
protect you. God continues to protect, to protect us as we continue towards God, who knows all, to give us a way out of this. Therefore, I welcome you all to this month, and we pray even for those who still cannot be able to come and celebrate the liturgy, and even receive Jesus, that they are still time to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us all call to acknowledge your failures so that we may prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, compassionate to the suffering, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, patient with sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, boundless in love, Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sins, and one day to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And it filled the entire house in 
which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Corinthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Spirit, the 
word of the Lord.
peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. As we said at the beginning, today we gather to celebrate the feast of the serenity, 50th day after we celebrated the feast of Easter, which by then I think we, we did it virtually and we are not able to be here. So, today, we are gathering here to celebrate and to mark that event that Jesus promised, or Jesus fulfills the promise he had given to his disciples of sending the Holy Spirit. We hear in our first reading and also in our gospel how that event was. We hear in our first reading that the disciples of Jesus Christ had gathered together under the closed doors because of the fear of the Jews. But when the Holy Spirit, the gift that they had been promised, that will be their advocate, their helper, their paraclete, he was able to involve them and they went out there speaking boldly about Jesus Christ that had been put to death and now has risen and has gone back to the Father. The Feast of Pentecost crosses the Paschal mystery, which is the passion, death, and the resurrection and the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next week, we start our ordinary time where we go back to where we started, I think, in the sixth week of the ordinary time, and where we were hearing the gospel of St. Luke as he tried to teach the daily lives of Jesus Christ. When we say that today we end and we are ending this weekend, the Easter, the celebration. We also know that today is also a reminder of something new that started after the Pentecost. For we know that it's through, through this solemnity of Pentecost that the Church of Christ was given birth to. And therefore, all of us who believe in the Church of Christ, who make the body of Christ, we can tell ourselves happy birthday. Because we remember that day when the Holy Spirit came to the apostles and they were able even if they were only a small group of people, we are hearing that after this first Pentecost, over 3,000 believers were added to the flock of faith. 
And therefore, when we say that now we are in the life of the church that Christ inaugurated, today through our gospel, I think we can be asking us what is our role in the church of Christ. And maybe because all of us, at a very personal way, through baptism and confirmation, we are the members of that church. We can ask ourselves, what is the gift, what's the role of the gift of the Holy Spirit in us? We know that by the Holy Spirit coming to our lives, He has made all who are baptized to be the dwelling places of the Holy Spirit. In other way, we become temples of the Holy Spirit. We know that by the coming of the Holy Spirit, Spirit to you and to me at our baptism and confirmation has come to be able to sanctify us every day and especially through the sacraments we receive. We know that by baptism, we are all given the dignity of being the members of the church, being called the children of God. We know by the sacrament of confirmation, we are made so soldiers of Jesus Christ, and that we can be able to fight the battle that comes to our lives as temptations. We know by the Holy Eucharist, Christ gives us always the spiritual food that we need in our journey. We know that by the sacrament of the sick and of confession, we are consigned to God and with one another. And we also know that through the sacrament of the Holy Orders and the sacrament of matrimony, we are sent out there to be service, to be of some service to our humanity, to our brothers and sisters. And therefore, having known that we have been elevated to that dignity by the gift of the Holy Spirit, we know the fruits of the Holy Spirit, that we are called to be loving people, we are called to be joyous, we are called to be forgiving, we are called to be kind, we are called to be gentle, and we are called to be reconcilers. And therefore, today, as we celebrate this feast of Pentecost, let us, let us renew ourselves to the commitments of our faith. Today, we are being reminded that now that Jesus Christ has sent the Holy Spirit to his church, to you and to me, then our call is to, is to take the active role in the Church of Christ, in the support of the mission work of the Church, by the resources that God has given you and me, our time, our prayers, and when every day we come to the Church, and every day we come and get nourished through the Word of God. It is our call that we can be able to go out there for the remaining of the days of the week to bring that godliness in our own practical ways of life. Not only by preaching with the words of mouth, but also how we live each day. Let us pray that may the Holy Spirit come to us and renew our lives and renew the face of the church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Let us now stand and confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, right from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified and appointed spirate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again in order to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, holy, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us now unite in prayer as the disciples did on the first Pentecost and open ourselves to receive the very same Holy Spirit. Our response is, come Holy Spirit. For the church, that we may be transformed and renewed through the Spirit's presence in our hearts, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, for a renewal of the gifts of the Spirit in our lives, that we may recognize and put into practice all the gifts which we have been given, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, for all working to end the pandemic, that God inspire and give insight to all who are caring for the sick, developing treatments or researching vaccines, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, for the safety of all men and women currently serving in our military, and for peace in the world, we pray. Amen. For the spirit of healing, that God will touch all who are burdened with illness, especially those affected by the coronavirus, and Carrie Herman, Father John Hallowell, and Bob Stanton. May they be healed by the tender healing hand of Jesus, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. For the spirit of life, that God will be merciful and give eternal life to all who have died, especially victims of the coronavirus. Stanley Roman, Edith Sirk, and Barbara Beck. May they be resting in the kingdom of the Father, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. And for deceased members of the Siglars and Sinkar families, who are being remembered in this Mass in a special way, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. For those prayers and intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Father, we rejoice in your spirit. Set him again into our hearts and into our eyes and into our world. Hear our prayer, prayer and save us in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray now, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of His sacrifice and graciously bring us into all truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is to the right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exudes in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you the, said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice, my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. of your 
Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oppression of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will not reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance to be left, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph as spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation be prayed, O Lord, and advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your brethren church on earth, with your servant, Francis Wapoop, John Bishop, the order of bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have sum summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered through the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and their passing from this life, give kind amid us to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy of the Amen. But one is here in the world.
we have some few announcements. Please check our website or call the parish office for any changes of the weekend masses. And do we have visitors today? Oh, we are all visitors. <laughs> <laughs> so again, welcome back. And for those who are celebrating their birthdays, and for those who are celebrating their anniversaries, Now let us pray. O God, who bestow the heavenly gifts upon your church, save God, we pray the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force and that this spiritual food may gain her an abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please bow down for the blessing. May God, the Father of light, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' mind by the outpouring of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you grandness of his blessing and make you always about the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. May the word rest pray that appear above the disciples, powerfully cleanse your hearts from every evil, and perfect them with its purifying light. Amen. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many times, the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in that same faith, and by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever.